Hey, what's up, YouTubers? It's me again, Brian, aka Gamer55551. And for this video, I'm back with a video game review. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at the Resident Evil Revelation Collection from the Nintendo Switch, also available on the PS4 and the Xbox One as well. Um, the Resident Evil series has sort of had its ups and downs over the over the couple of years. While it has certainly hit some high points with games like Resident Evil 2 to Resident Evil 4, and earlier this year with Resident Evil 7, which was a good, which was definitely a boost it needed after what happened with 6, it also had its low points as well with um, I wasn't really a big fan of Resident Evil Survivor. Uh, 5, I think it's the weakest one. I don't like the forced co-op in that game. And everyone pretty much hated 6 though. Me, not as much. I thought that 6 improved in some areas with 5 and it certainly is a better game now than when it originally came out. Nevertheless, it's not loved by a lot of people though. So. What's also interesting is that the Resident Evil series has also made its way onto handheld devices, though, as well. Um, the original Resident Evil Revelations was originally a 3DS exclusive, released around the same, back, I think, in 2012, the same year that Operation Raccoon City, a uh, bad game, as what I might point out, was released, and 6 as well. And then, of course, Revelations. The original 3DS would then later be ported over to the PS3, 360, and Wii U as sort of a, a sort of as Capcom's way of saying, yeah, about Resident Evil 6. We kind of apologize for that though. And then of course Revelations 2 would be released, but only on the PS4, PS3, uh, 360, Xbox One, and of course the Vita. And it skipped the Nintendo systems altogether, which was kind of a disappointment to some exact but earlier but now that along with the first one has been released earlier this year on what is dubbed the resident evil revelation collection on both the ps4 the xbox one and now recently was released for the nintendo switch so how does the game hold up how does the switch version of a game where the first one was originally released on the Nintendo 3DS and the second one released on the other systems I mentioned, PS4, PS3, Xbox 360, Xbox One, Vita. How does that hold up? Well, I will say while the game certainly is not going to dethrone 4 or to a certain extent Resident Evil 7, which I think is the second best Resident Evil game though, I still think they are fun and good games nevertheless though. So why don't we get started with our pros and cons though? So, <clears throat> excuse me, I thought I was going to sneeze right there. So, we'll get started first with the pros. Uh, the first one I do want to point out is that with the Resident Evil Collection, you're getting both games with all of its DLCs, though, and the game actually runs pr runs at a 1080p when the, when the Switch is docked, though. So, content-wise, it's pretty good, though. Also, it's also worth pointing out it runs at 720p when undocked, but for the most part, both Revelations... 1 and 2 will run at 1080p and then 720p undocked. So it doesn't look that bad though. Obviously it's not going to look anywhere near the level of the PS4 or Xbox One, but it still holds up pretty well. Uh, the next thing I do want to point out is that is the gameplay. And I thought this was kind of interesting when the game originally came out and I still think it's interesting now though. It's kind of a mixture of some of the shooting mechanics you would see from like, you know, Resident Evil 4 or later third-person shooter mechanics though, with some elements of old school Resident Evil though. For example though, um, when you shoot enemies though, they're not gonna drop items, not all of them will drop items the way they did in Resident Evil 4. Um, you have to look for ammo, you have to also watch your ammo to be very careful with it. And of course, you know, solving some of the puzzles in the game. So it borrows certain el old school elements from Resident Evil, but puts it in a third person perspective, though, which to me is definitely a good thing. So it's a mixture of the new mechanics found in Resident Evil game, mostly like in Resident Evil 4, to some old school Resident Evil elements as well. And last but not least, it's worth pointing out that Revolution, as Resident Evil Revolution, though, 
Um, runs at pretty much a good 60 frames per second, though. Um, I'm not, I'm not no expert or anything like that. I mean, Digital Family did a video, but for the most part, I saw the game run pretty well at a 60 frames per second and all, both docked and undocked as well. So Revelations runs at a good 60 frames per second. All right, uh, we're gonna take a bit of a break. And when we come back though, I'm gonna give you my cons about it. Plus, I'm gonna give you my thoughts on the movie Star Wars The Last Jedi, which I saw in theaters today. Um, obviously this video will be up on Tuesday, but I saw it on Sunday, but in either case, I'll give you my thoughts about that movie as well. So take a bit of a break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part two of our video review of the Resident Evil Revelation Collection for the Nintendo Switch. And if you haven't checked out any of my gameplay footage, you can check out in the link in the description. I have one for Revelation and Revelation 2, so feel free to check out those videos. Again, links are in the description of this video, though. So now that I gave you my pros and what I did like about it, so let's get started with the cons. And for the cons though, some of it is mostly aimed at Revelations 2. It's still a good game, don't get me wrong, but there are some decisions, there are some decisions, at least in the Switch version, I'm not particularly, particularly happy about. I won't say I'm losing sleep over it, it's just a little bit disappointed in, in that version as well, or the way that, that was handled. So. While we get started with the cons, uh, the first one I do want to point out, as as I said earlier in the as I said in the pros though, I mentioned that Resident Evil Revelation, the first one, runs at a good 60 frames uh, per second, which is definitely good. However, Revelations 2, the sequel, unfortunately for the majority of the time, runs only at a 30 frames per second, and this applies to the Switch version only. Which is a little bit disappointed compared to, I believe, the other versions, such as the PS4 and Xbox One, which, I, unless I'm, I could be wrong on this, but I believe those run at a, at a 60 frames per second. So, it is a little disappointing to see Revelations 2 run at a 30 frames per second, and the first one runs at a 60 frames per second. Does it ruin the game completely? No, it doesn't, but it is somewhat of a disappointment that it is, it is, it is a disappointment. It is an unfortunate disappointment, though. All right, the next one I do want to point out is that it's the story, though. And the story, I felt, at least this one, I, is a little bit on the cheesy side, though. Especially when you do the previously on Resident Evil, like make it like a whole episodic. I just think the whole thing is just done, though. I'm not saying it's terrible, but I just feel it's a little bit cheesy. Although I do think Revelations 2 story, it's a little bit better though. I th definitely get a bit more of like, you know, Resident Evil 2 or Resident Evil 4 vibe out of it, which is certainly not a bad thing. So the story's a little cheesy. It's not something to lose sleep over, but it is a bit on the cheesy side though. And I will, although as I said, I think Revelations 2 story is a little bit better. And last but not least though, I do have to say the biggest disappointment that Resident Evil Revelation Collection, at least Switch version goes, is that Revelation 2 is a download only title though. And to top it all off, just to even give you a good idea, if you can see it right here, though um, I'll put it up right here if I just get it up there for just a second where is it okay if not pardon me if I'm not getting it up there properly in any way but if you do decide to download the title though you better have enough space on your Nintendo Switch because it will require a if I read that correctly yep a 26 gigabyte download I this is a bit annoying I will point out while not as bad as the WWE 2K, which has its own shares of problems, and people have criticized that game a lot, and the outrageous, like, I think 32 gigabyte download that game has, I still think it's a little annoying that Revelations 2 is a 26 gigabyte um, download only. And I would like to say this highlights one of the problems the Nintendo Switch has, and something Nintendo is going to have to address. I mean, 
and that is the storage situation though whether it's getting a new whether it's getting like hooking up like a hard drive using the cloud or up in the file size on their cartridges which currently sits at 32 gigabytes though although there are some issues whether that it would be expensive or not either way it does have to be addressed and i think it is really outrageous that a 26 gigabyte download is needed to download resident evil revelations 2 though though to be fair according to the download sheet though the the and i'm i'm not kidding this is what it says it expires if you if you buy this game and you decide to get the code it expires 12 31 27 99 so you have like about well this is correct almost like you have like 800 years to use this that's right 800 years all right i don't know why they put that there but hey but in either case though it is annoying that there is a 26 gigabyte download to basically download resident evil revelation 2 it's not all on the same cartridge though and i believe they're doing that with bayonetta 2 too which i'm a little disappointed with that as well um overall Re revelations is still it's still a good game for the nintendo switch nevertheless um it blends a lot of the old school resident evil with some new school stuff though and the gameplay is still fun though it may not look anywhere as good as say the ps4 or the xbox one version but it still holds up just fine at, just fine though i will say the switch version is both a good and a bad thing on one hand you're getting both games and it's portable and you can bring it on the go and bring it home though and the first one and both of them run at 1080p on the other hand while the first one runs at 60 frames per second the second one runs at 30 frames per second and the fact that a 26 gigabyte download is needed for the game might be a turn off for some people but it's if the storage issue is any problem for you then it's worth taking a look on at resident evil revelation it may not be Resident Evil 7 like some of us would like to see, though, but it is definitely one of the good Resident Evil games, in my opinion, so it's worth definitely taking a look at. Okay, before I end this video, I do want to give you my quick thoughts about Star Wars The Last Jedi, which I just saw today in theaters, even though this video will probably be posted on Tuesday. I saw it on Sunday as well, and I have to say, I actually enjoyed it. I know there are some people on the internet making a big freaking deal about it, losing their minds and all that stuff, but I enjoyed it though. I felt like the movie kind of gave off a little bit of a Empire Strikes Back vibe to it, which is which is really neat though. Um, I do think Kylo Ren, if I'm saying the name correctly, his character was certainly different than he was in The Force Awakening. Um, I thought the late Carrie Fisher's character was really interesting. I thought she did a good job running princess leia it's a shame this is the last time we're ever going to see that character though and i think a lot of people who are upset about the like like they were with han solo and with with a lot of these characters you know dying off i'm not going to spoil it or any i'm not going to try to reveal who or who or what uh, like that stuff but i have to say is it is expected at least for me i think it is because at some point these characters are going to retire and that a new generation is going to have to take over. I mean, look what happened with Logan though. Obviously, as much as I would love to see Hugh Jackman play Wolverine forever though, it's clear that's not going to happen. It's clear that he will eventually retire and someone else is going to have to take, the, take his place as Wolverine. Obviously, that's a big shoe to fill, but hopefully they'll find the right actor, especially now that Disney got... Disney now owns parts of Fox and got the rights to the X-Men and so on. But in either case, I thought the movie was good. I enjoyed it. I thought it was entertaining. There were certain scenes I was clapping and and liked. And I definitely, like I said, it definitely had an Empire Strike Back vibe to it. With a little bit of maybe, um, where one scene kind of, kind of looked familiar to the end, near the end of excuse me, Return of the Jedi was. So, you know what? Despite what some people who are complaining about it and losing their minds over it, I liked it. I enjoyed it. And I am looking forward to seeing what 
episode nine is going to be. Um, I know some people are upset about this movie and it's been diversive and all that stuff, but I came away very pleased with it, despite what it says. I know some people disagree with me with it, but whatever. You can't please everyone, though. <clears throat> Okay, um, this concludes my uh, video review of Resident Evil Revelation Collection from the Nintendo Switch and my thoughts on Star Wars The Last Jedi. And again, these are my opinion, but what are yours? What are your thoughts about Resident Evil Revelation Collection from the Nintendo Switch? Is it worth a buy? Is it not worth a buy though? Do you, are you enjoying the game or do you wish that they brought over Resident Evil 7 instead though? Does the fact that Revelations 2 running at 30 frames per second and require, require a 26 gigabyte download, is that a issue or is that a non-issue to be exact? So, um, did you like both games? Did you hate both games? And what are your thoughts about The Last Jedi? Did you enjoy that movie? Did you not enjoy it? Do you think people have a right to be angry or do you think people are blowing this way out of proportion? Portion though. Um, do you agree with what I said in this video? Do you disagree? Do you have a difference of opinion? As always, sound off in the comment section below. Let me know what you think. And I hope you hit that like button. I would appreciate it. And I hope you do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, feel free to share this video if you want to. And feel free to donate to my YouTube channel if you like. You could do it through pa Patreon or PayPal me. Uh, links will be in the description of this video. Um, it's even here in Southern California, and I will see you again next time when I do another video. Hopefully that will be soon. Until then, from Southern California, wish you all a good evening then. Bye!